We here at TFL love our electric cars and we love charging them. It's an exciting world with 120 volts, 240 volts, fast chargers. There's a lot of different options, but what happens when there's no options at all? You see, plugging an electric car into an outlet is not a hard thing to do. But recently, especially in California, we've seen a lot of forest fires and a lot of even natural disasters that have caused widespread outages. And how do you get home? How do you keep your car charged if you don't have access to on-the-grid power? Now, we recently did a video seeing if we could charge our Tesla Model X with this portable generator. And it was a little bit of a disaster. Take a look. Let's go ahead and plug in the Tesla. Just like that, we're charging. Now I'm gonna up it to 12 amps and we're gonna let this thing charge. And once the gas runs out entirely on the generator, we'll come back and see how much mileage we put back in the car. All right, so we finished our testing and we let it go. And after about three hours, we came back to the Tesla and it wasn't charging. In that three hours, we did bump our range up 12 miles. It went from 114 to 126. The generator never actually shut off. The Tesla just stopped accepting power from it. So we're gonna have to do a little bit more research into this. We're not sure exactly why the Tesla stopped accepting a charge. So yes, technically the little Generac here did charge our Tesla, but at 120 volts, we only got two or three miles of range gained every hour, which really isn't all that usable for a lot of people, especially if you rely on your electric car. The other issue was with this Generac, which frankly has been kind of a disaster on all accounts. It just, it doesn't want to run. It doesn't want to stay running. It costs, it spurts. It's just not a very good unit. We're still holding a constant 123 in the voltage. Oh, oh, the generator seems to be uh, sputtering and it died. So you can't really rely on a small Generac like this to get you where you need to go in the event of a total power outage. The good news is not all generators are created equal. And that's a really good news because while there are small generators, there are also big ones and then massive ones. And this is a pretty massive generator. This is the Honda EU 7000 IS. And our friends at Honda really hooked us up this week with this unit because this is not only 120 volt charging, but 240 volt charging at a max rating of 7,000 watts. In this video, we're gonna unbox this baby, get it running, and take a look, see if maybe there's a better solution for keeping your EV charged in an absolute emergency. The EU7000i here has several purposes. It can be used in both commercial and residential applications, but what you'll notice is it's quite a big unit and it's quite an expensive unit. This retails to near $5,000. So this is not gonna be a tiny little generator that you use once a year on a campsite. This is gonna be one that's built to save your bacon in the event of a total house power outage. And actually, you can use this generator in a couple of different ways. So obviously you can use it on a work site or on a campsite It's kind of just your standard power appliance generator, but you can also wire this into your house and use it to power all of your home needs. Now we're gonna try all of those here at TFL. So first, we're gonna just try plugging a car into it like you would if you were living off the grid, maybe going on a long camping trip, but we're also gonna have it installed in a home and then see if we can use it to actually power a house. So here we go. So included in the box, you actually have the Honda EU 7000 IS. We'll get to the specs in a second. Then you've got you know, your owner's manual, warranty information. Before we begin the assembly here on the Honda EU 7000 IS, we're actually gonna go ahead and remove the battery because one of the cool things about this unit is the electric start. We're gonna pull this out, stick it on the charger. So we get a nice full charge for our first start. And then we're gonna hook it all up, put some oil in the unit, put the wheels on, and then see how it runs. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is actually install the wheels because this is one heavy, heavy unit and we wanna be able to kind of bring it around easily. So there's no oil in the unit. It doesn't come shipped with oil, so we're not gonna damage it by putting it on its side. And then what we have to do here is actually install a set of these brackets that'll bolt onto the bottom of the unit. And then we've got an axle here and we have 
a couple of wheels, which are just rolling away. <laughs> there we go. A couple of wheels, we'll get these bolted up, and then we'll get this generator running. All right, battery's all hooked up here, and I actually have this little safety key. It's not a security device, it's just another safety measure so you don't get a runaway here, but you can see right now on the display, it's flashing oil when I turn it on, and that's because the generator does not chip with oil. We're gonna put a quart of 10W30 in here, stick some gas in it, and see what happens. Here on the 7000 IS, we have two access panels, one on each side to get access to the 389cc fuel-injected motor, and there's just these little half turns that you can use with a screwdriver, and that pops open. And one cool thing you'll notice here is this is all nicely sealed up. There's actually a gasket around the edge here, so you don't get leakage into the motor compartment. And you'll actually also see right here, even a pull start. That's some nice technology, but before we do anything, we're gonna have to fill it up with oil. We've got right here a little screw-on dipstick, and Honda says the capacity of the generator here is 1.16 quarts. So, got my little funnel. The Honda EU 7000 IS is one large unit. In fact, it is the second largest in the entire Honda generator lineup. It is powered by a 389cc single cylinder engine, air cooled, but it has electronic fuel injection, which is awesome. No more dealing with carburetors, no more dealing with chokes. It also has electric start, simply twist the knob, push a button and off you go, but if the battery is dead, there is also a pull start backup. The running rating on this generator is 5,500 watts, but it's surprisingly quiet at that rating, under 60 decibels, and Honda actually offers this generator with a three-year commercial and residential warranty, which is a great feature. So how long will the generator last you on a single tank full? Well, it's actually a fairly large tank. It's 5.1 gallons. And what we have here is just a small amount of gas just so we can get through the break-in procedure. But Honda says that this generator will go up to 18 hours on one tank of fuel. Of course, it depends a lot on your load and whether or not you are in eco mode. But for now, we're just gonna put about a gallon, maybe half a gallon in to see if we can get it running and then see what happens. Let's talk about this control panel really quick. First of all, our on and off switch, we talked about that. That's power to the generator. We have our start button here, four 120 volt outlets, and then a couple of 30 amp outlets as well. So we have a three prong and a four prong, once again, up to 240 volts. And that's all controlled right here. So you can go from 120 all the way up to 240. Then we have our circuit protectors over here, 30 and 20 um, amp protectors. Um, we've got some fuses down here. On this side of the engine, you have access to the air box and the spark plugs, but let's go ahead and see if we can get her running. All right, first start with the generator. I'm actually gonna put down this little handle, which is not that hard to do, just like that. So we're gonna go ahead and flick it on, fuel injected so there's no choke, and then you simply push the engine start. That was pretty easy. Now you always wanna start it with your eco throttle off, but when you flick it on, it actually lowers the RPMs, and this is perfect for a longer run time, and it'll conserve a lot of fuel. So, now it's time to let the generator kind of go through its braking procedure, and then in future episodes, we're actually gonna come back and try this thing out with a car. So here's what we're gonna do. We're actually gonna plug it in, not only to a 120 volt outlet, but a 240 volt outlet. We'll see if the grounding is an issue, and if it is, we're gonna to have to get a little bit creative. And then of course, we're gonna wire this up to a house and see what it'll do in case you have a total power outage with your house. See if you can still charge your electric vehicle. Okay, so this is just a little preview of what's to come, but we've got our e-golf here and that comes with your standard 120 volt J1772 plug. And we know we've been able to charge these cars off that little orange generator with a bonding plug. Now we needed a bonding plug because those generators used a floating neutral ground. And I have a feeling that this is the same. Actually, no, it's the same because it says neutral floating here on the side of the unit, which means we're gonna probably have to get a little bit creative, but let's see what happens when we simply just plug this puppy in 
plug in the car, is it even gonna let us charge at all? So you can see here, even on our little test, we've got a fault, which means there's a grounding issue. So we're gonna have to do a lot more testing and get a little bit more creative when it comes to charging up these cars because all of these models require a really solid ground, something generators typically don't have. So I think it's time to get a long copper rod, pound it into the earth, and see if we can charge them that way. But that's all gonna be in future episodes. Be sure to stay tuned on our series of charging with a generator because we've got some exciting stuff coming. We're gonna see if we can even charge at 240 whatsoever. See if we can get some emergency juice back into these cars if your power dies or if you're out on a long camping trip. Well, as always, this is Tommy with the Fastlink Car. Head over to tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in everything EV charging reviews.